Okay, hold on a second, Keisha. Just let me ask Ronald exactly what's going on because it takes two to tango and I need to hear his side of the story. So she's driving me insane. Got stress heavy on my brain. She keeps playing silly games. Man, I'm about to bring the pain. We seem to fuss and fight every day and every night. Please give some advice so we can see. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this is gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. How was that right? Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I don't like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. The trail has been committed. Hit you with the bad yeah. patch routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, is back in the building. You already know what it is. It's, it's Wednesday. And when it's Wednesday, we're going to call it Give Us Free Day. Because this is the day the men come together and speak. You gonna dig? Without boundaries, without borders. I got a couple people in the house right now and a couple more on their way. You already know how I get down before I introduce the topic. You already know how I get down. You already know. I like to promote black-owned businesses. I like to give businesses a shot. You ain't heard from me in a minute. I still got a couple of businesses that I promote, that I love, that I respect. Total package energy. I'm on the juice now. You know dig? I'm on the juice now. The greatest energy drink in all history. Total package energy. Go to totalpackageenergy.com. Tell them Zoe Williams sent you. Order 1,000 cases. Why not? Let's blow this black-owned business up. Also, Listen, I had a conversation, man. I'm hearing that Beal sauce is flying off, I guess, the shelves. It's not really on shelves. But that Beal hot sauce, that shit is flying off. It's flying, man. My man is selling a gang of it. Bealsauce.com. That's like Bradley Beal. It's not Bradley Beal's brand. Beal Sauce.com. You the dig? Schmuckatelli, Sergeant Sauce, and Gunny Fire. Let's get let's get 400. We could do that. Let's get 400 cases moved. You the dig? Let's get 400 cases of Beal Sauce moved. Let's do it right now. Also, can I tell y'all? The relationship dismount. How to stick the landing when it is available on Amazon in multiple uh, formats. Kindle. Uh, Audible. Uh, man, stop calling me. You see I'm in here running the show? It's Black Ron. He, how you call me while I'm on the air? See? Black Ron. Okay, cool. 
total uh, re- uh, the relationship dismount. How does Dick the Landing would exit a toxic relationship? Multiple formats. You under dig? Audible, Kindle, paperback, all on Amazon.com. Go there right now. 2015 relationship book release. Then the 2019 release, the holographic relationship. Just drop that one. Oh, we gotta get your we gotta get your seat. Yeah, okay, cool. We're gonna get you a seat now. You and the dig, the holographic relationship came out on Valentine's Day. I thought it was apropos to drop it on that day. Go get your copy right now from my website, I am Williams.com. Listen, if this is your first time tuning into mansions, you already know what it is. Listen, I urge everybody in the chat room. Oh, good looking. Good looking on the super chat. I, ur- I urge everybody in the chat room to hit the like button, to hit the share button, to hit the super chat button. We got some big things coming in April, no, in August. And I really want y'all to understand what it is that I'm trying to do. Dash Radio. You know, yeah, everybody knows I run talk radio here at Dash. I'm the program director for the talk division, VP of talk programming. We, we got, what, 60, 70 shows on the talk format? Something crazy. Anyway, these people done fucked around and gave me my own channel? <laughs> what? They gave me my own channel, man. In August, I'm dropping VOR Radio, Voice of Reason Radio. I got to do something reasonable, I guess. <laughs> we going to go ham and eggs on this channel. I don't think y'all understand, man. I'm looking for the next great young talent. I'm looking for the people that's out here trying to change the world, man. Just take a listen. Listen to the imaging. Just check it out. Tune in and turn your life up on VOR Radio. The Williams is the VOR. Voice of reason. On on dad, red, dad, 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 dad. I don't know if you're ready, (laughs) but we go kill them. Conscious, hip-hop, music, meaningful conversation. You're now locked into Zoe Williams, V-O-R Radio. On Dash Radio. You're in the dig. They not ready, man. <laughs> they not ready. Let me just stop right now. I'm not going to reveal too much, but I'm telling you, I just interviewed a young lady today. Man, super conscious sister. Because, you know, a lot of times people be talking shit. They be like, oh, black men be hating on women. and But it be black men giving women opportunities. Yo, yo. I don't, <laughs> Bobby, you was there. I gave 75 women <laughs> opportunities in this month. I give you an opportunity to turn around and bite me? The hand that fed you with no strings attached? Let me just be real. This is mansions. The hand that fed you with no pubic hairs attached. I didn't ask for no pussy. You mean I gave you an opportunity to ask for no pussy? Because <laughs> you know most niggas you deal with. You, you know what it is, most niggas you deal with. Be honest, ladies. Most niggas you deal with, if he offer you a, a biscuit, a cheddar biscuit, pussy is attached. The coochie is contingent. Something is attached to that biscuit. <laughs> I done gave a whole lot of opportunities to women, and there have been quite a few that have... With no springs attached. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> no box springs yeah, attached. Yeah, mm. So anyway, I've promoted, I've promoted what I'm going to promote for tonight. 
I want to hear from people. This is a caller-driven show. We got a jam-packed house. I want to introduce everybody. I got to give out the number. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. We got an amazing goddamn show tonight, man. We got some heavy hitters in the building. We got, listen, my old boy Billionaire is back there. Let me tell you something, man. I love bringing on the young guns. See, me and Bobby, we old. Well, Bobby's old. Older. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like mid-level old. Yeah. <laughs> Middle age. <laughs> well, just remember, like, age and treachery will overcome youth and skill. Damn it, Bobby. Damn, that was deep. Bobby. That's why I beat you on the basketball court, but that's another story, Bobby. Then we're going to fix. Bobby, I'm not playing you again. You can't. Bobby, like my son, that one time I beat him when I knew, like, I ain't going to be able to beat him again. That's all I needed. That's all I need. I'm done. I'm never playing you again. (laughs) That's your best outcome. Bobby, I'm never playing you again, so don't ask. (laughs) You lost by two fucking with me. That's it. Yeah. Bobby didn't expect me to play defense. Anyway. And he ain't played since. Uh, Ah. Bobby, I've retired from basketball. We're done. But I beat you. And it's over. So just live with it, Bobby. Let the record (laughs) reflect. (laughs) Right. Let the record reflect that you lost, Bobby. By two. By two. At one time. Mm. Did I do you up, Bobby? Like you would never have before or since. Come on in, brother. Just come on in. Damn. (laughs) All right, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Mansion series, if you've just tuned in and you don't know what we do, I try to hold intelligent, meaningful, impactful conversations. Mm. I've written two books on relationships. I've written three But two, the last two, are on relationships. You heard me promo them earlier. The relationship dismount. How to stick the landing when exiting a toxic relationship. Critically acclaimed relationship workbook. The second one just came out February 14th, 2019. The holographic relationship. This is my belief, and Bobby knows me pretty well. As the relationships go in the black community, so goes the black community. If the relationships ain't shit, the community ain't shit. If the community ain't shit, we can't capitalize on nothing. So to be running around talking about we spend 1.7 trillion, but not as not it's not focused. So if it's not focused, you can't extrapolate the impact that it could have if there was an agenda behind it. It's everybody's got a flat screen. So today's topic. Mm. <laughs> 62 inches for everybody. Today's topic on mansions. Oh, this is a tough topic. You guys saw that uh, that documentary, When They See Us? Saw it. Well, I've changed it. Mm. It's When She Sees Us. Oh. Yeah. Monkey lava. Yes. Through what filter are you looking at us, black men, through Sis, who made your glasses? Mm. Who's your spiritual optometrist? Mm. I know. <laughs> Ain't nobody asked you no shit like this before. <laughs> I know. Mm. But I you, got... Do you have relationship astigmatism? <laughs> <laughs> do you understand? There's something in your eyes. Are you nearsighted or farsighted? Huh? What? Are you 20-20? <laughs> God damn it. Through what lens are you looking at me through? And who authored the lens? Mm. Who's your lens crafter? Who's your lens crafter? I like that. When she sees us, what must black, or excuse me, who must black men save slash protect black women from? Feminism, us, or themselves? I know. This is a tough conversation today, <laughs> but we got to have it. Say it one more time, sir. What? You know you're not supposed to be here. Get out of here. This ain't your show. Bye. Bye. Peaches, get. That's Peaches from our show. <laughs> I don't know why she's here you during know why Mansions. She's here. I just showed up during Mansions. Mm-hmm. Today's topic, one more time, the number to dial is 323-230-4610. I'm going to rattle off some questions, and then we're going to get the conversation going. 
when she sees us. Who must black men save slash protect black women from? Feminism? Us? Or themselves? When does a man's, a black man's, social gender assignment of protecting and providing for women and children blur the lines and become controlling and abusive? You ain't got no power in society, so I know you're going to enforce your will at home if you make him more money. Mm-hmm. That's a tough question. Can we, let me hit that one more time. When does a, a black man's social gender assignment, this is what you're supposed to be doing as a man, right? protecting and providing, mm-hmm. when does that blur the line and become controlling and abusive? A lot of black men can't leave because they haven't healed what they've been through at home. So they get a little piece of change. They get a little money. They get some resources. They think that's power. And then they enforce that on woman and child in the home environment. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. The number to dial, three, two, it's real talk here today, 323-230-4610. Bobby, I know you got something for me. Do sisters still respect and honor a black man's ability to protect them. Do they even want it? Does it have any value in their relationship choosing? Like, oh, he could protect me. He can provide. Just... Let's go to number to dial, 323-230-4610. Do black men presume a morality that black women don't operate by when dating? Mm. <laughs> Break that down in real nigga ease. See, you know how we are for for the most part, men. I like you, girl. <laughs> and you know I do. You knows I like you. Now, I'm gonna shut a few things down because I like you. I'm talking about the real like, not the I'm playing around. When a nigga lock in, I'm talking about moving in. He lock in. For the most part, he lock in. Now, you might not be able to get him away from the homies, but when he lock in, he lock in. Now, this question is simply asking, if I lock in, are you ten toes down with me? Mm. Or do I have to continue to perform, continue to reach certain benchmarks in order to keep you satisfied in this relationship? Mm. Huh, Aisha? <laughs> <laughs> you never, I, I, so let me introduce everybody that's in the room right now. We finna go ham. Comedian, Black Ron. You saw him last night on the 5150 show with me and Corey Hoke and Black Ron. Welcome to Mansion. Man, thank you. Come on, brother. I'm finally here. We about to get it, right? Let's do this. Let's do this, man. You know? And then sitting right next to Black Ron is none other than tree beard from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the old wise one. This is the man right here, man. I don't know if y'all be listening, but the man drops jewels every show. And if you don't have one of these brothers yeah, in your circle, your circle is missing an entire library of experience. That's the sage, man. He got to be here. Mansions. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Bobby Glanton Smith. You want to say hi? They, they watching you, Bobby. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Glanton the Great. Glanton the Great in the mm. building next to him. Hold on. Let me turn the camera. Hey, the whole squad is in the building right now. Next to him. This is my first, second time, well, third time meeting this young brother, but we haven't had an opportunity to sit down and talk. Correct. But I've heard about him, and I've seen some of his work. Youngster called 19 Keys. Don't don't mind me calling you youngster, brother. I mean, just. I'm you still know. young. Hey, young yeah. and old is based on how you feel. 19 Keys is in the building. 19 Keys, chief. Behind him, billionaire PA is in the building. 
Behind him, comedian extraordinaire, then broke through the internet social media ceiling. He kept his integrity. <laughs> Mm. Like you're talking about me. Huh. Ryan okay. Davis is in the building. Who the hell? Exactly. Who Ryan the hell Davis. is Ryan Davis? <laughs> so you already know what the topic is. Let's get real. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the super chat button. We live right now. Let's go. How do they see us, Bobby? For the most part, in 2019, black women looking at black men how do they see us bruh we're invisible to our sisters invisible <sighs> to ourselves uh, i was having a conversation with a friend of mine just a few minutes ago and his sister she lives in atlanta and um i said the thing that is most troubling now is that we don't even see each other when i encounter people that i don't know of the same uh, color that I am, they almost go out of their way to not look into each other's eyes, into my eyes as I try to find their eyes. So that's what I mean by we're invisible. We're in a, a dark, sunken place with respect to just even acknowledging each other's presence on the, on, on the planet. Wow. Black Ron. Well... I'm going to piggyback kind of off what Uncle Bobby just said. Not only are we invisible to most sisters, they see us as casualties of social war. Ooh. Okay, say more. Uh, you, you got the floor. Go ahead. In other words, all of us that live in metropolitan areas, we've driven past a VA, a homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. We see all those wounded veterans mm -hmm. that looked at downcast members of society people that we can step over and step past, step beyond, because they have nothing left to offer the world. Whatever it is they brought to us is long forgotten. Mm. Mm. And we have all of these veterans of social war as black men. You're talking about mm. black men that have lived through the 70s, black men that have lived through the 80s, the 90s, black men that have now come into the knowledge that there can be a black president, but what does that mean when your woman views you? Because when there was no such thing as a black president, well, then your man's failure in life could always be blamed on the higher powers that are keeping him under thumb. Mm. But then when they let one of us through, well, what's stopping you from getting through, nigga? Mm. He got through. Mm. So now add that with, now you got to come to the brand new knowledge mm -hmm. of how to operate yourself as a man mm. With, mm. With, with political correctness with understanding that being the man that your father was no longer works in today's society. Mm. And despite how good of a job he did teaching you on how to be a man, he taught you how to be an antiquated, outdated, obsolete man. <sighs> 19 keys. Um, when you're talking about the way someone views you, you're talking about their paradigm of thinking. And I believe it comes more so from white patriarchal propaganda. And I was having a conversation with a young lady uh, just yesterday, and she was talking about how um, an older black lady told her that she should go choose a white man because he will see her as a queen and treat her as a queen. Mm. And I said, that's interesting that white men get to exist outside the space of the things that they've affected. And when I think about that, is that they cause the situation, and then they get to step away from it like, look, I'm good. I'm unaffected by what I created. Mm. And so there's a, the propaganda, and when I think about that idea, is that she was talking about how, yeah, the black man can sexually satisfy her, but there's a missing of any other wants and needs that she found in the requirement of what a woman would want. Like, mm -hmm. And then that means is that in slavery time or just throughout time, you know, the, the propaganda was that the Mandingo, the, you know, I'm talking about the the, the, the sexual um, idea that black men were only good for this, procreation. We just want to fuck their women. You right. know what I'm talking about? Right, right. And so that propaganda has been shared in movies, shared in music. Shared Birth in, of a nation. Yeah, 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 all of the things. And I don't think that uh, we realize that 
that's still a view that we have. And then a lot of men don't realize that they may play upon that view because we've inherited these thought processes through our uncles, our fathers, our brothers, our cousins, our peers, and how our approach is towards the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I believe the view comes from white patriarchal propaganda. Mm. Wow. Ladies, if you disagree, the phone lines are open. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. Ryan Davis, what lens do you think sisters are looking at brothers through in 2019? In 2019, um, uh, the lens, the lens that they're looking at us through, is definitely not a real one. I, uh, you know, being on social media, having the platform that I have, I like to ask questions just to see what's on their minds. I found that in today's age of you know social media and microwave society and everybody wanting things to come to them quickly. A lot of women tend to enjoy attention more than they they pay more attention to what you know people are paying attention to than what we're actually telling them or showing them what our actions a man can say a million times I like the women I like are this way this is what I'm looking for but if I like a picture of a girl twerking she'd rather be <laughs> the girl twerking because a bunch of guys are liking it, but nobody's taking the twerking girl home. Mm, mm, mm. And attention. She's going to have 4 million likes. She's going to have 4 million likes has taken the place of, they'd rather have that than respect. You know what you're saying? you saying something that reminds me of what Cool Mo D told me about that kind of woman. Yeah. He said, everybody will fuck you. Mm. Yeah. But not everybody will fuck with you. Yeah. Eesh. And we live in a time like we look one of the biggest platforms on social media as far as black news or content is the shade room. Yeah. Ninety percent of the women that they post aren't celebrities. They're either people, women who have had sex with celebrities, uh, known to be naked around celebrities, <laughs> or they're on a uh or they're on like a reality TV show just showing the worst kind of stereotypical toxic behavior you can. And those are looked at as the elites now. But wait, Ryan, do we have to also hold black men accountable for, in some instances, making those stereotypes real? What do you mean? So if the white man is the author of all this shit (laughs) and we behave a certain way, because you know how it is, that gray area will get you labeled some shit. Yeah. You understand? So we say, well, goddamn, he lost his cool. I always say black men don't have room in this society to be human. No. And what I mean by that is a fucking sociologist over here at UCLA can casually say, well, you know. Anger and aggression is ubiquitous within the human condition. From babies to elderly, we deal with anger. Mm -hmm. But if a black man shows anger, this motherfucker is Lucifer himself. Yeah. So again, black men... He's violent. He's he's overly aggressive. Now watch how I take this. He's a danger to society. Right. Now watch how I take this. Black men got to walk on eggshells to avoid stereotypes or being associated with stereotypes in much the same way Obama had to when he was in office. Mm-hmm. Just like he could never show he could he could get angry, he could be mean, he could be he couldn't show that because that stereotype of the angry black man is there. So now if your woman disrespects you, if your woman pushes you too far, if your woman's testosterone levels is higher than yours and she put, <laughs> punching you around and you pop off, you're a scourge on the community. How do we fix that lens that the sister sees us through? It's, to, for me, it's, it's through communication, man. You got to... When you're dealing with, when every woman in your life, you got to have those conversations with your mother, your sister, your potential mate, 
everybody you got to have these conversations with and you got to tell them just plain and simple, the things you see in entertainment or the things you see that's glorified in certain sections is just that. It's entertainment. It's not reality. Reality is the relationships you have with people outside of your social media, outside of what you see on TV, outside of what you see in movies. What those things, you know what I mean? You got to realize a lot of the things that you see that people are calling life is scripted. Mm. Uh But then media at the same time, I think that's where you get to adjust the actual narrative because that's what programs people to believe certain things and take on certain narratives. So there's a responsibility for the so-called influencers or the, the media people or the individuals who put out influence that impressions the people that makes the expressions of the people. You have to put out the specific content of the things that you want to see. Mm. So all of it is programming. You have the ability to impress in someone's mind, make them think a certain thing, and that becomes their new filter of reality. But if the media doesn't showcase different black men with multidimensional you know, thought patterns and and ways of being, then a person never sees it. They never get that impressed upon them, so they never filter you through a different lens. Mm. Obama should have showed some anger. He should have showed the normality of a black man being angry but intelligent at the same time. Mm. He could have humanized that effect. Mm -hmm. But trying to showcase a level of perfection to try to, you know, go away from the stereotypes only sort of appeases the idea that, well, no, Obama doesn't fit the stereotype, but everybody else does. Right. Instead of creating a whole new stereotype or just a whole new type in itself, a whole new archetype, rather, that that's, represents a black man that can be multidimensional, that can get angry, that can have issues, that can have problems. Sometimes we often try to present perfection instead of show the imperfection as the normality, you know, and that's what we need to get to. Uh, no, you just said something powerful, young man, and I appreciate you for saying this. Obama's the archetype. And you the stereotype. Mm-hmm. God damn. Well, who's the prototype then? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm the prototype. <laughs> Yo, no, we got we got the good brother say, Blue Pill I'm in the, the building. It was face, just brought face. to my attention. <laughs> I want to get your perspective on this too, man. What lens is she looking at us through and how do we change it? Is there well, a way we could change our glasses? Just what the brother said. You know, I believe that art imitates, life imitates art. So if we want to see a different reality in our reality, then we need a different tapestry in our art. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Same way that we grew up and we say, yo, we want to declare Huxtable, right? That was something that some people said, yo, that's not realistic. That's not real. But people actually grew up with that particular archetype in their mind. So they was looking for something that didn't necessarily exist, but people template their reality based on their programming. Mm -hmm. So if everything is a program, why not put out into the quote-unquote reality, the things that you want to see. Same thing the brother said. Mm. So it starts from here. You know what I mean? This is where media is created. This is where it's exported around the world. They Mm -hmm. consider us, they call us black diamonds. We're the most coveted export in this country is entertainment Mm -hmm. and athletes. It's, you know, it's the black diamonds. Mm -hmm. So we have to take it amongst ourselves to create the media that we want to see and export that around the world. And with these platforms, we don't necessarily need the machines anymore to do it. Mm-hmm. The brothers have the power in their own hand. Mm-hmm. So what outside of that, you know, we expect somebody else to have our best interests in our hands and to project the image that is counter to the one that's working for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This right, this right. this particular design feeds a lot of different industries for them. So why would they counter that? Wow. Wow. I often um, quote my, my late Uncle James Glantine because it's prophetic what he shared with me some 50 years later. If you give the propaganda to the proper goose, Mm. you'll need a Brinks truck to take the money to the bank. I see that happening in terms of the disconnect in uh, the black experience between one form of excellence and the consequences of ignorance. Now, there are people in this room that can make a great living in front of a camera, in front of a microphone, on a stage, with a ball in their hand. In our community, and, and to our, our, I guess, demise, those are the only people that we celebrate. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, in this world right now, electricians and plumbers mm. 
are in such a demand that they can make a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. But they're not glamorous. Right. They're not glamorous. And it's we're not, not in that we're not in that pool right now. So <laughs> let me let me let me ask this though. Let me ask this. Let me ask this. Does every don't leave yet, Ryan? Don't leave yet. Does everybody in here agree with the Nation of Islam, their perspective, Elijah Muhammad, uh, uh, Farrakhan's perspective of the black man being the physical manifestation of God? The direct quote is that the black man is the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the God of the universe. Right. So does everybody agree with that? I agree. Not entirely. Not entirely. Where are you at on it? Speak in the mic now. It's got to be a fact in every in every way. It it's you can see it. You can see it where everything is tested. You can see it where intelligence is tested. You can see it where mm-hmm. I like this physicality is tested. You can see it where will is into when that when your will is tested. Oftentimes. Really, every time the person leading the pack is what? Right. All right. <laughs> now, All right. Now, 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 let me say this. Can we access that divine birthright while being wards of this society? Which is exactly why I said not entirely. Because, number one, if you don't realize and then actualize the God concept that's in you. You're a ward. You okay? You're you're look at it like you're this. You're robbing. Bro. Look at it like this. Inside every hardware store, they sell batteries. Double A batteries, car batteries, nine volt batteries. Those batteries have the power to charge up whatever you plug them into. But as long as them some bitches sit on their shelf at the store, that is unrealized potential. What we are is a whole pack of batteries mm. still in the plastic. <laughs> I mean, there is. That's a, what I'm. Black we have all, there, we have all a of the power within us to achieve whatever is necessary, but we got to tap in first. Mm. There is potential energy and kinetic energy, and when you talk about evolution, right? So when we look at our cousins, the Egyptians or Sumerians, and we look at the things that they were able to build, you know, the way that they was able to perform engineering, arithmetic, all of the different things that they was able to create. The problem that we have more so is the accumulation of knowledge that we pass down that showcases that frequency of God that we are actually able to make kinetic. And by that I mean is when you look at the 6,000-year sphere of time that, you know, the white man has been on this planet Earth, he's done a great job at recording his history from outside the cave to the White House. Whilst erasing now, everybody else's. Now, the importance Correct. of that, if you look at somebody like um, – uh, Tesla, and then you'll look at somebody like Elon Musk. Right. What you're looking at is an accumulation of knowledge over time. Right. And that's the reason that someone like Elon Musk has the ability now to have power and rule is because that information is continuously being passed down. The way we do it sometimes in our society, well, all the time, uh, is that we pit our ancestors against each other. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait. You you going somewhere that's big. You speaking religiously? Yeah. No, he, no. He, he, he's on to something. He's... Wait, finish that, and then I'm going to come right behind you. Is that when you think about it in this manner, that nobody's going to put Einstein against— That's uh, where I was going. uh, 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 (laughs) Any other the ancestors, they don't care about what their ideologies were that differed. They're going to teach both of them to their children so that they can add on to the accumulation of knowledge of which one that they had that they brought into, you know, uh, the collective. Now, wait, let me jump in now. We're talking about education versus indoctrination. The stereotype is indoctrinated. Yes. The archetype is educated. Yes. Do you see? When you talk about true education, what you're actually talking about is freedom, creativity, and expansion. Right. Einstein was allowed to be an asshole as a child in school. Mm. The black boy is not allowed to be an asshole in school because he's disruptive. He put him in he's aggressive. Age. He's violent. So our sisters, the baby girls, are watching how the system deals with the creative process in men. Mm. 
mm-hmm. which is expulsion, which is detention, which is get out of the class, which equals get out of the house yeah. as you grow up. Yeah. Do you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Especially if you ain't willing to abide by these white folks' rules. You're going to have to get out this house. You got to get the, the principal fuck said, out. said, get your ass out. <laughs> get out. But 19, that's why I brought up religion when you made that point, brother, because that's that same commonality. With white, with, with, with white folks, they allow themselves the freedom of expansion in their exploration. Mm-hmm. With black folks, we... we you better memorize this shit, we, nigga. We pick you want to pass this test, you better get your memory together, nigga. We pick a monotheistic <laughs> kind of way of applying everything. Right. And we teach our kids, it's this one and then fuck everything else. If you're down with Martin, we don't teach Malcolm. Right, because we look at things from... Uh, individuation instead of, you know, the collective organism, what what the individuals add into the collective. Instead, we start to surround the collective around the individual. And we apply that that mentality across the board. Right. There, we got, instead of celebrating the greatness in all of our athletes, we got to say who the best. Right. To the point where we didn't even, uh, we couldn't even enjoy the fact that Kobe and LeBron were in the league at the same time. Right. And you'll never see right. two people at that level of greatness in the same field How about right, it? ever again. I mean, you can even look at, if you want to look at it, even inside, you know, religious organizations, such as the Nation of Islam. <laughs> Hold on. I'm such as the Nation of Islam. You look at it like this. If you look at, you got Khalid Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X. Um, I would just stop at those. But if you look at each one of those had a particular mastery and frequency that they was actually able to bring out that was valuable to the collective. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, by par, his knowledge trumps everybody else because he produced the other man. Now, the oratory skill of Malcolm X, I'm going to take that. But I'm not going to say, oh, because he had this particular knowledge, I want the oratory skills of Elijah Muhammad. The ability far kind to have longevity and bring people together like the Million Man March I'm going to take that frequency of manifestation. The spirit of Khalid Muhammad, I'm going to take that frequency of manifestation. You take that and you impregnate that into the next generation, and that's how they add on to those different frequencies so that you have this hybrid of our evolution continuously being passed down instead of saying that, no, I don't like this part of his story, so I'm going to go with him and everything that's attached to that and not see none of the value of the manifestations of that God frequency. Because when you're talking about someone being a black God, each one of us, has a particular frequency that the next person don't have. Right. So if I bow down to you, you understand me, then I get to learn something from you that I don't have. Same thing with you, you, you. So I get to take on the accumulation of all of those different things that y'all have cultivated. But if I say that I have this and it's better than yours without allowing myself to even figure out what you have, or somebody say that, nah, because he's a Muslim, I believe in him, so I'm just not going to listen to the rest of y'all. Right. That's right. the burden of monotheism. Well, that's the, but, but the Quran teaches that you should study everything from the cradle to the grave. But you can't do that with a closed mind, right. a conditioned mind, or a cultured mind. Or with a mind that you're researching it to disprove it. But right. that's the cultured mind. It got to be truth-seeking mind. It has to be a truth-seeking mind. Truth is equated to freedom. Hmm. That should really be the only essence of the core of any religion is truth. Well, um, someone said a minute ago... Um, we have to look at all of it from a dimensional standpoint. Mm-hmm. The, theor- the theocracy is is, is 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 a very important element, and then there's the doers. Uh, we Uh-oh. can't leave. Here we go. Yeah, execution. We can't leave those people out of this conversation if we're looking for true freedom. Um, I think what you may have Booker T. Washington, but it's a lot of truth in cash your bucket down where you are, and then he was able to through the law of attraction create a synergy with the great George Washington Carver. Mm-hmm. And one thing you can do is go to Tuskegee, Alabama, and see what black hands have made. Mm-hmm. And then you can go over to Birmingham and check out what H.G. Gaston did. And then you can look at, in terms of building businesses, what S.B. Fuller did. Yes. So all of these component parts have to somehow come together to the point where we don't leave nothing on the table. That's exactly what I mean. It keeps us from formatting a a methodology that produces self-sufficiency. So the woman can't respect us Mm. if we steal batteries on the shelf. Right. Because that's what you said. 
in the battery is the power of God. Right. But we haven't realized that power. Right. So you can't say you got. Do we all agree with you can't say you're at your supreme height. Now, you know, white people steal shit. They steal everything. God damn it. They done stole every significant science on the planet Earth and claimed it as their own. True. Right. How you got fucking Imhotep. In Kemet, doing surgery and shit, and then this white boy says, "Well, it's, it's our shit." The Hippocratic Oath. We, mm-hmm. we, I'm the father. Hippocrates. Your name is Hippocracy, Nick. It's the hypocritical oath. It, the, the hypocritical <laughs> oath. Right? Hippo, hippos don't even live in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> African animal. Right? So what? I'm, but what I'm saying is. Yeah, we did great shit in the past as other cultures, as other societies. The great Indus, Mm -hmm. the Kush society, all that shit ours. Okay, great. But what we got here? Mm Hip-hop? Now, hip-hop is a global brand that we just don't own. That's not even ours no more. But that's, again... The spirit of it is ours, but we haven't created the platforms to where we can have it vertically integrated, where we can own it. I was just doing a, a, a podcast with the brother uh, Idris Sandu. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we were talking about being the owners of the actual operating systems, you know, and that's where you actually get the real power. There's no power unless you own it because when you look at, just think about when you, know, when you drive home today and you go look at all of the houses, you go look at the way that the sidewalk is built, you go walk up to your door. You go look at the gate. You go look at the mailbox. You go look at the doorknob. When you go eat, you go look at the fork and the spoon. All of those came out of someone else's mind and not ours. So the way that we interface with those things is a reaction of somebody else's design. It's not based upon how our nature would be. So even if you take those batteries out the pack, sometimes those batteries are not in a conducive environment for them to be truly charged up and to work efficiently because our environment is against our nature. So... Then that ain't God. Boy, you to me. You stole two no, bikes of it out no, of my No, what you're talking about, though, is more so recreating a design so that the exactly. battery fits so that it can work properly. So we can. Because a black man being, like, Jay-Z just became a billionaire. So we talking about ambition versus aspiration, right? Ambition oh, is I like this. obtaining ahead. more. Aspiration is becoming more. Yeah. Jay-Z, if he died 10 years ago, he was already a legend. But there's going to be some people who now grade him by his ability to hoard money or his ability to, to be you know, uh, to gain capital in his earnings when that's not truly his legacy at all. The billion dollars don't even really mean nothing in the in the presence of what his ability of his genius was able to do musicality, musically. Mm-hmm. So when we think about that, I mean, if we're talking about the lens of black man, oftentimes people are looking at you for what you have instead of who you are. And that's why he's never actually get to a point where you can humanize and empathize with the individual that you're talking with and looking at that archetype as them as a full individual. Cause you're saying, what kind of car you got? You know what I'm saying? Where do you work at? You know what I'm saying? Where do you stay? You are always looking at what does this person have? Because you're grading it by uh, American and Westernized standards. Transactional. Right. So then the answer though is the lens that they looking at us at is either a, a prism or B a kaleidoscope because you never get the full <laughs> picture of what you're looking at. Mm. Come on, now, man. Now, let me ask you a question. Why was Einstein considered a genius? Because of his ability to embrace his failure. No, it was mathematics. Uh, hold on, hold on. Einstein wasn't a, a, a billionaire. He didn't create hardware or software. Einstein thought. Right. He had thought experiments. And by the thought experiments that he had, he published his thoughts, and other people tried to prove his thoughts, and they couldn't. And he created a new scientific paradigm. Now, when I think about that, and we're talking about black men being gods, he at first didn't even want to publish it. His friend was, he was working at the invention shop, and they're like, no, nah, put it out there, put it out there. And he finally did. There's a lot of black men who reach that same accumulation of thought, but people don't observe their thoughts. Because all he did was he was his thinker. So yeah. when you talk about God potential, you may look at Einstein like, oh, he's a genius. But this same black man that may have those same thoughts that you never observed, you don't look at that potential of genius. So even a measurement of our godly potential is off till because we still measuring ourselves based off they measuring stick. We measure ourselves based off that. Still, we even measure ourselves based off their psychological models instead of our comedic models of, of spirit. We do it based off the mind, you know. So it's an unfair game when you're talking about the even the measuring stick of what cultivates and showcases 
a person's godly potential and what a part of that potential is being kinetic and what part of that potential is still dormant as, poten- as exactly. potential energy. Exactly. So who who's right to consider Einstein a genius? Because all of his progress was theoretical. Well, hold on. Let's well, stop here because we're starting to veer off. Einstein was a mathematical genius. When you talk about quantum physics mm-hmm. and the theory of relativity, two different sciences, right? That's why they're having a problem right now. They can't reconcile the two. Right. One deals with the big, the large, that's Einstein. Mm-hmm. Planets, gravity, space, time, not the infinite, not at all. That's quantum physics. Quantum physics was brought in by the Einstein, uh, they were enthusiasts. They was like, oh, God, Einstein is a god. Einstein is the guy. But science doesn't stop. You got to keep studying. You got to keep going. There's new theories. All kind of shit is still popping up. So you get Niels Bohr. What is Niels Bohr studying? The Bhagavad Gita. The Upanishads. The Reg Veda. Now, a Christian, or sometimes not even a Muslim, going to know what the fuck that is. I was about to say, uh, uh, I was about to say, how many of y'all out there listening don't know what Zoe's talking about? Because I'm over here in the corner, like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that too, yeah, yeah, he studied that. What is that? Right, but but Niels Bohr, Rig Velveeta, Rig Niels Bohr is studying this shit. And when you talk about the infinites of the universe, some of the best poetry on the planet Earth that describes it metaphorically is the Upanishads, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita. The fuck? Right. Cool. So he's studying that and he's saying, well, with this mathematical equation, I can see what Einstein is doing. But what Einstein is doing is just simply smoothing out Newton. That the fucking universe is mechanical. No, that's just dealing with big shit. I'm going to get to you, Bobby. The small shit is where the big shit emerges from. Makes sense when you see Jesus say, with the strength of a mustard seed, you can move a fucking mountain. Well, scientists have figured out within a square centimeter of open space, there's enough energy to destroy this planet 15, 20, 30, 40, 100 times. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So again, Einstein was a genius because he was able to create models with mathematics. We got niggas who would rather have a degree in sociology than one in engineering. We're turning out motherfuckers that are Theoretical. Specifically designed to be employed. Mm-hmm. But see, on that on that topic, it still stays on topic as far as how black men are viewed. Because if you take all of that, all of this high science information and knowledge that a person knows, they're not measured as more valuable because of what they know. Right. No, you you're 100 percent right. But if we look at history books, white men are measured by what they know. We but see, talk about Socrates and Aristotle and but you know other like people. I know history is his story. True. Right. We got to break up with Whitey. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today, <laughs> frames of, of reference and models of possibility are important to this conversation right now. Anybody in here ever heard of Wendell Stimley? No sir. Okay. Godwin Awunze, never heard of it. There's an organization called the National Association of Minority Contractors. When you talk about mathematics, the two gentlemen I mentioned, Godwin Awunze and Wendell Stimley, are mathematical geniuses. Mm. All right, Wendell is the president of the National Association of Minority Contractors. Uh, Next week, we'll be celebrating 50-year anniversary of the organization. It's the oldest black construction association in the United States. When you talk about mathematics as it relates to black people, we need to know who the mathematicians are. How about it? Who have put people to work. How about it? Agreed. In his career as a contractor, construction manager, consultant, and whatnot, Wendell has probably put in his 30-year career 10,000 black men to work. Mm. And if we don't know about that, how can we replicate that? There right. we go. No accumulation. So when no we start having these kinds of conversations, I ain't taking nothing away from Einstein or whoever. The, the question we have and the challenge we have is, 
who's available for us to pull from to start to solve our multitude of problems? Because right now we Today. can't. We can't. Wendell told me a long time ago. He said, "Bobby, if you can't feed people, you can't mm-hmm. lead people." Straight up. All the rhetoric in the world sounds good in church, on the corner, wherever. But to keep a person's attention and their commitment, you have to solve their fundamental problems, where they're going to sleep, where they're going to eat, and and what they're going to do to feel good about being on the planet. Right. On a consistent basis. If you can't affect those things, then we'll have this conversation next year and the year after until we reach the point of extinction. And we're getting closer to that each and every year. Passing day. Let me tell you right now, you're listening to Mansions on Dash Talk X. This is what we do up in here. Men come in here and we sharpen swords in this mug, man. We got to speak the real. We got to have these conversations. How are we going to heal our community? How are we going to value our women? How are we going to raise our children? If we don't have these types of discussions, that's the purpose of the Mansion Show. I'm glad everybody is here. Let me do a quick roll call. Black Ron is in the building. Ryan Davis is in the building. 19 Keys, Billionaire, Blue Pill, Bobby, Glanton, Smith, and, of course, myself, Zoe Williams. We in the building right now. I want to get the brother Blue Pill on the mic a little bit before I open up. Because I'm opening up the phone line, so get to them right now. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. I want to hear from women, sisters. How do you see us? Through what lens are you looking at us through? Do you know when you have on a pair of white supremacist shades? No Mm -hmm. privilege prisms. Privilege prisms. Mm. Call us and let us know how you feel about this discussion. 323-230-4610, blue pill. Yes. So we still building on the last question? Absolutely. Um, The brother that he interviewed the other day, Idris, he said something powerful. In order for us to, if we are created from that, which is the quote-unquote creator, then we are the creator. You know, quantum physically, at a quantum level, we have that same potentiality as the creation that we were created from. But like the brother said on this side, it very well may be unrealized. You know what I'm saying? There's still a lot more to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Brother Wesley Muhammad speaks about young gods versus, you know, the older God. You know, you're still a giant regardless of whether you're contained in a cage or not. You know what I'm saying? So we have a process of unraveling and coming out of that particular cage to really see the elder God or the the seasoned God aspect of what really God entails. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We, We possess the potentiality, but is it realized? And if it is, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. So let me ask you. Is it possible for black masculinity to fully mature under a white supremacist system? Um, One can't thrive uh, in the confines of the other. In order for us to fully stand up on our own two as fully expressed God, like how they got memed, the the statue in, in Kemet, Fully erect God. That's what I'm saying. Come on, Blue Pill. (laughs) Then we have to uh, shatter this particular paradigm. And that's what they are understanding and working against continuously every single day to keep you blind to the fact that that potentiality, that seed exists within you. So they will terrorize the seed from that incubated state in education early in class, traumatize the seed. And just like, you know, how they were courted a slave they are impregnating and teaching that young girl, like you said, from an early stage, that this child is counter to society, so this is not the one that you want to pair with. Right. Because eventually he was going to get quartered. Right. Right. So let me ask you this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad broke down the numbers for us. Yes. Right? 85, 10, 5. Mm-hmm. Are the numbers still the same? <laughs> um. Mm. Yeah, I know that's, that's a heavy question, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's heavy. So for people who don't know what 85-10-5 is, Break it down. 85% Break it down. is what? Sleep. Right. Dumb, deaf, and blind. Dumb, deaf, and blind. <laughs> 10. 10% are the, the knowledge and won't those who know right, but won't share it. Right. They are the blood suckers of the poor, right? Indeed. And then the 5%. The 5%. True and living gods. True and living gods. Can somebody get a calculator out? Can we do what 5% of 8 billion is? 
<laughs> and now, oh, hold on, hold no, because what's killing me is what's killing me is Rakim is revered by whites all day. You gonna like this number? The woo, 40 million? right? That'll be uh, four hundred and forty million. Four hundred million. So, wow. so look, the Wu Tang is revered by whites on the Love world. world. Nas, Public Enemy, Public. I've been in them concerts. Go back and listen to this hip hop. Big Daddy Kane. Go Common. Back. Common. Go back and listen to this hip hop. You go Black Thought. Even NWA. You gonna hear? You gonna hear the science, right? Of the gods and earths. So how do you recognize the gods? Don't oblige mommy said after me comes God or after me comes the executors. No, no, no. So a, a, those a, who doing the work are the gods. But see, that's why I want to come back to has the number changed? Is there progression? Yeah, it's Cardi B now. Because nothing, because what I'm saying is, <laughs> n- okay, you gave us the number 85, 10, 5, but nothing is monolithic. Nothing stays the same. Yes. It's more like 90. It's more like Are we making progression in the five. right direction or progression in the wrong direction? Can you speak to that blue pill? Um Once again, this is a question of potentiality. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I believe that potential-wise the five exists, you know, it just might be unrealized. Uh there's a large majority of they said that the woke generation is a Generation Z, the woke generation, is a $4.4 billion generation. They, mm. they have evaluated it, so they have to have a level of numbers on it. You know what I mean? So these children, these Generation Zs, who are not necessarily millennials, you know, they have a long trajectory to go. And these are the children are gonna they're, they're going to live with singularity. They're going to live with, you know, they're living with this phone, so they have access to the information, you know, um, the spark that actually puts them online, I don't think that that thing has actually took place yet. Thank you. Because this is what I'm getting to ultimately. She trying to push you to what? Mm -hmm. God realization or social acceptance? Where's she pushing you? Right. She wants it somewhere in the middle. She yeah. wants to recognize the God in herself while getting you to assimilate at the same time. Because because here's the thing. If you're not God, realized, I tell women this all the time, you looking for a God-fearing man, right? Because this system put the fear of God in you. Instead of a God being. Man. Instead of a God-realized man. Yeah. She like, a God-actualized like man. So my question goes back now. If you're not God-actualized, you're a child to her mm. and a child to the system. Mm. Well, that goes with manhood as well. I break down a, a, a part of manhood as management, um, having the ability uh, in management and business terms is administering the activities to get to set obligations and goals. So when a person is at that man age, it means that they have the ability to manage themselves to be a producer, provider, protector, um, all of the different things that fall under the study of being a man. It's the same thing with a God. So once you master the manhood, then that's when you can step up and just tap into your Godhood. But at the same time, there's a requirement of having a woman in order to be within that Godhood because she brings out part of your potentiality that you can't get on your own. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Blue pill, then Bobby. Yeah, she's like, you know, I don't mind all that conscious stuff, but can you have a billion dollars like Jay-Z? <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time for the deaf <laughs> niggas in the back. <laughs> she like, I don't, you know, I don't mind all that deep conscious stuff, but um, can you pull up with a billion dollars like Jay? Mm. You know, because I don't necessarily want to say that consciousness or um, wokeness has been usurped, you know, by entertainment or what have you. But okay, they saying that it has, it has. huh? Right. Oh, listen. So they're putting a new lens on it, a new frame on it. You feel me? So I think that there's an intrinsic battle between the 10 and the 5 that the 85ers are very blind to. And, and that's where the pool is being, you know what I mean? The pool is up for grab between the 10 and the 5. And the 10 is getting glossed over, putting on a uniform of the mm-hmm. 5 and coming in and saying, you know, this is still Americanism. So all that information with, with you know, with no finances, that's not, that, that don't add up in this society. 
Nice, nice, nice. Ryan, uh, <laughs> Bobby. You can just look at, you take. It's supposed to be Bobby. If you take okay. an educated man who does for his community and puts everything that he gains back into his people, he'll never be revered like the guy who's putting money up to his ear. All right, I'm out. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Okay. That's, a, that's a great segue. Uh, Damn. Go ahead, Bobby. The hat I have on, the God box, um, I bought yeah. it from David Banner, mm-hmm. who I met through Zoe. Mm-hmm. And David's a solid dude, man. Mm-hmm. Solid dude. See, the backstories are important because we don't know them. And that's why we always seem to think that it's outside of our realm. If you aren't already successful, you end up worshiping somebody else. Mm. Not knowing that they didn't make it by they self. Right. Mm. There's a man named David Moody who's a contractor in Atlanta. And when David came back to the South from his time out here in California, broken, confused. The brother took him into his home for about eight months because he had a woman with him that understood that you don't get to choose who I develop because the man was, you know, he was centered in who he was enough to see the talent in this brother and to provide him a space to reconnect to his godness. Mm-hmm. And now David went 360 to the point where now that he has come back to a point where he's doing well, he's able to teach because somebody gave him a chance to learn Mm -hmm. how to be a god. Right. So what we have to do is reconstruct the elements of a village, of an empire, and it takes different dimensions, different perspectives, but one common Objective, and that is to make each person you come in contact with a better person. Mm-hmm. Facts. Mm. And, 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 and sometimes religion gets in the way of that unless we just step outside of whether you're a Christian or a Baptist or whatever the hell that may mean to know that there's a oneness in our spirit, especially when we are confronted with the, the issues we're dealing with right now. Because as men in 2019... The number one thing that should be on our mind is preservation of our culture and of our dignity and of our Mm self-respect. Because if we don't have that, we won't weather the storms. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm so sick of talking about white folks, I don't know what to do. I know you do. I don't spend my time talking about it. (laughs) So, but let me touch on what you're talking about, Bobby, because you're saying something good and I want to add some context to it. Some more shit white people stole. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. At the bottom is what everybody wants. Right. Physiological needs, food, water, warmth, rest. That's the bottom level. Mm -hmm. A jacket, some pants, some drawers, And and a sandwich. And a roof. Mm -hmm. Basic. Basic needs. Mm -hmm. Above that is safety and security. My question is, if women put those two priorities above everything else, is the society on a basic level? Yes. She is not. See, because let me tell you something about white folk. Break it down. White folk steal everything now. You get your Masons, right? You know the history of the Masons. We know this, right? Then they start to sequester the knowledge that they got from us. Then they make a special lodge just for niggas in their system. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) The fuck happened? You got the knowledge from me. (laughs) Then you claimed ownership of the knowledge I shared with you. I didn't share all of it either. Right. They put us on a reservation with our then, own knowledge. Then, within their system, for niggas who are trying to get into their system, we're going to put you on an island over here in this lodge. With a waiting list for all of it. Do you see? Mm. Now, let me... When you get around to it. Let me take it... The Masons, right? 
There is a part of masonry that corresponds with Maslow's hierarchy. At the top of the pyramid is Mm self-actualization. That's self-realization. That's oneness with God. That's nirvana. That's samsara. That's samadhi. That's that's the higher consciousness. Is that what they consider the 33rd degree? It's beyond that. Right? Let me finish, Bobby. That's why I'm I'm holding my water. And I'm going to come to you, Bobby. So, my question is, in their history, a Mason such as George Washington and others can be raised to godhood. It's called apotheosis. Apotheosis. Apothos, raising theosis. The raising to godhood. You go to D.C., and one of them goddamn... Masonic fucking museums, you'll see on the top, there's a ceiling. On the top of the ceiling, you'll see fucking George Washington in the position of God when he's reaching out to Adam. That's called apotheosis, the raising to godhood. My question to all of you men in here now. When you raise to godhood, the way this society sees you, remember we said the archetype and the stereotype. When you raise to godhood, when you become self-actualized, are you now a terrorist? No, you're a Garveyite. Marcus Garvey famously said, and we forgot to pass, you mentioned that earlier, you know, we didn't pass things on and we didn't accumulate knowledge. Mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey famously said, what men have done, men can do. Mm. Up, you mighty race. What you you can accomplish what you will. Mm-hmm. So how did Marcus Garvey end up a, in oblivion? And we sitting here talking about Keep going, Bobby. Maslow. Is <laughs> because we didn't appreciate and evaluate the greatness and the excellence in us. There are people in all dimensions of our existence as human beings that look like us. That but didn't Bobby, take no shit but Bobby, off nobody. But Bobby, we can't like each other if we're looking for permission. That's my whole point. We can't get permission from Whitey and say, "Can I like this nigga?" No, no you don't have to. You have to understand <laughs> human nature. Uh, I love watching National Geographic because things are still ordered that way. Mm. The winners win. Mm. Because that's all they commit themselves to doing. Mm. Each mm. and every day Keep the going, sun Bobby. comes up, they know ain't nothing changed. If I slip, I'm finished. Mm. So they produce that. The week they get done in. Right. They get left behind because they know that they can't survive as a culture if they don't con- uh, continue to produce strength and greatness. And we seem to lose concept of that. Mm. It's like, oh, it doesn't really matter what we think, what we eat, who we follow, what we do. So we'll try a little of this, a little of that, and they think, you know, we end up in somebody else's pool, drowning. Mm. Because we try to trail mix ideology. Who said that? (laughs) Keep going. What what, what we do is we see this big old bowl of knowledge, and we pick out the pieces that taste good to us Mm. because the other parts have to do with changing your lifestyle to achieve true righteousness, so that 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 tastes good. Mm. That's not that's that that's the part that's good for you. So that's not really palatable. So we'll leave that behind in the mm. bowl. Mm. But all the blessings and, and 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 the favor and all that other stuff that folks believe God for, we'll pick and choose that. Mm. The reason why black folks fall, find fault with each other and can't raise each other up in that level is. Every time throughout history, a man has talked about black folks realizing our own true power. That man is also devoid of Christianity, which is the one thing that Negroes have tethered ourselves to Mm. since we got here. Mm. But it ain't just Christianity. It's all the Abrahamic religions. But but the reason why I mention Christianity specifically is because in the nation of Islam, even though that was an anti-Christian mindset, it was still telling black folks, get yourself up. Mm. We, we can do we can do all things through ourselves that strengthen us. Mm. No, then, I totally agree with you. If Joseph Smith mm. can say that the Native Americans are the are the he are the Israelites of the Bible, and that Jesus came from Israel to North America with gold tablets. 
that he was able to look into a magic hat and decipher. You talking about the man who? who we talking about the Mormons. Mormons. <laughs> yes. The shit that killed me is that's clearly Hanna Barbera. That's clearly. <laughs> Boy, you coming straight out of comic book. <laughs> right. That's clearly some made up shit, right? And once upon a time. So at the end of the day, I have nothing against a black version of that. Oh, I'm gonna tell you why why black folks have a re, a black ver, uh, are opposed to a black version of that because we've accepted the imagery of a white god. See, white folks can make whatever religion they want because we've given them altruistic power over us by and large, which is why. And white folks they didn't buy into the same dream they sold us. Which is why when white folks get money, they become Scientologists. <laughs> Since we making up some shit, let's go do the rich nigga made up shit. <laughs> Since we made up all of this shit, let's go do the rich nigga made up shit. We'll leave that broke nigga shit for them niggas that still believe in, in Jesus. We got too much money to still be believing in Jesus, nigga. We made him up. We made I, I, him I think, up. I think we're... we're <laughs> a solution comes from and thought process is that we've oh, always shit. believed that being a master was the immoral thing. Mm. So what we have is we have a slave's morality system. Mm. Is that everything oh, associated with the master we've seen is wrong. His ability to create our values, our beliefs, our language, our time, every single thing. Mm -hmm. So when we look at that, we say, well, if we do any of those things, then that means that we immoral. And the fact that we can't do those things make us higher morals. Mm. Meaning that being a slave, we must be good because they masters and that's wrong. So anything associated with them, we don't want to do. Mm. So when it comes up to making our own religions, our own language, our own time system, our own culture, our own rituals on everything, we look at that as a master thing. Or so our own networks. We don't have a or master our own morality. streaming uh, things are exactly. owning, owning our own, own, or our own teams, mm. or even Sports capitalism teams. itself. Oh, well, capital being at the top <laughs> is never, uh, yeah, it's it's never and, an option. And then also at the same time, I think we have to recognize within that there's different levels of God that you can get to. Mm -hmm. So if you look at throughout history, there's only so many interesting beings that stand out out of trillions of people that existed is because there's some people that reach their God potentiality, mm -hmm. but we expected their God potentiality to be on the Garvey level mm -hmm. when everybody is not that there was somebody that was Garvey's partner that helped him out the entire way. Absolutely. That was his God potentiality in the army. There's somebody who cooked. There's somebody who do the drums. There's somebody who do the tech. There's somebody who clings. There's the soldiers, the lieutenants, the captains uh, uh, uh there's everybody has to learn how to play their role. Right. And then that's when the collective can benefit off your uniqueness that you draw from yourself and you add. But we living in a time where everybody is in a body, but everybody wants to be the face. Mm. You mean to tell me in the age of social media, people are going to play their role when everybody wants to be the star? We you talking about a time where people who ain't important feel like their opinion <laughs> means just as much as esteemed thinkers of our time simply mm. because they got a social media account too. Well, you know, we started mm. a group called The Shifters and co-created a group called The Shifters and it's individuals who come together who have their own influence, have their own power and when you, because we always say it's easy to do something by yourself. You, mm. and people always brag about what I do, my ego, my ego, my ego. It's hard to do something together, right? So what we did is instead of, you can't get rid of ego, you can just shift it in direction to where it's actually valuable. So we said we're going to start bragging about what we do together. So we call it the we go. Look at what we did. Look at what how we was able to work together. But also people don't understand the language of unity. The language of unity has never been expressed because people haven't seen it. So the language of unity is first inclusion. Mm -hmm. Inclusion then it breeds solidarity. Mm -hmm. And then solidarity breeds unity. But we've never worked on those steps, which is why we've never actualized it. There's a few more pieces to that. There's acceptance. There's appreciation. There's acknowledgement. Yeah. These are all levels of consciousness that <clears throat> actually interweave and create the web of unity. But we, we there's respect. There's consideration. Like That's where inclusion there's comes re from. There's regard. Like, there's some shit that we got to get to. We're but, afraid to pull up a seat at the table for each other a lot of times. But again, if we not vetting, see what, what do I mean by that? If 
I don't vet you, but you vetted by the system that oppresses us all. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. It's hard for me to respect you. Right. You vetted by the system. Right. Right. Then if you don't use your vet that you got from the system to funnel resources into the community. Right. You then I'm like, oh, shit. Inclusion, then, then. then this motherfucker right here don't give a fuck about that. That's a lack of regard. Right. Billionaire PA just jumped into the conversation. Billionaire, go. Man, I just wanted to add this piece right here. I think I finally realized what my grandmama meant when she said, um, make sure when you're in a room with a group of people that you're the dumbest person in the room. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's hard Because to I've been days. able to sit here. <laughs> I've been able to sit here <laughs> hey, on, on, on some real stuff. We all got our uh, our uniqueness and our gifts. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about playing the roles. You know what I'm saying? And like my man just said, not all the time do we have to be the face on social media. I wrote a quote that says, if you got less money in the bank than you got followers on Instagram, then you need to get you a new group of friends. Mm. Mm. If that quote hurts you, then, you know, you have to realize that I never set out to live my dream for your like or your comment or you support me because when I go home, I'm going to flip my switch on. It's going to come on and it's going to keep coming on whether you my friend or not. Mm-hmm. What, what I'm attempting to say is if the people really follow you, get the people to support what you actually doing and come up with something collective. Like somebody was telling me the other day, Zono, my goal is to inspire a billion people to speak their dreams into existence. I've been on that ever since I've known so. Mm. Somebody else said to me, well, what about the execution part? That's not my role. Mm. My role is to get you hyped up to understand your worth and your value and to unsuppress your mind so Mm. that you can take those lenses off that you have on. So if you put some lenses on me and taught me to see that a black man was not a king, Mm. I'm taking them lenses off because I don't have an oppressed mindset. So when we talk about Jesus, if Jesus did exist, you said Jesus turned water to wine. We all intelligent in here. What what race would have did something like that? Turn some water into wine. Only one. Only black people. <laughs> what person would have really? If we took in 2019, if y'all, if we said somebody is outside walking oh, yeah, okay. on the water, that's one nigga I know. It's only one black. So, <laughs> so, so what? I, what? What? My point. You know, my whole point is, you know what I'm saying, is to truly pull out. You know. A, to truly pull out a lot of the people that look just like me, pull out that potential in them and take their mind from a broke mindset to a wealthy mindset. And the first two letters in wealthy spells we, which is what my brother was talking about, the we go, not the ego. Oh, I love it. I can smoke a bag of that if I smoke. Bobby Glanton, get in there. Every day is a school day for me. I, and I got I want to learn something right now. 19 Keys, yes, what, sir. What, what is that about? 19 Keys uh, has multiple layers. The first impression I got from 19 Keys um, comes from Maswad Muhammad, from a quote. He said there's 17 million original people and there's 2 million Indians, and that represents the 19 million rusty locks. And he said that there's 19 million keys to unlock those minds. Key is an interchangeable word for chi or energy or knowledge of the mind to give enlightenment. There's a difference between enlightenment and awareness. A lot of people are aware of the problem, but they don't have the energy in the mind to execute and make change. You can make a person conscious that they're eating the wrong foods, but that doesn't mean that they're going to change their diet. That doesn't mean they're going to clean out their uh, refrigerator and start replacing that. That would be true enlightenment, active enlightenment. I feel targeted. Knowledge and executing. I feel targeted. I'm not going to lie, it was directly at you. Yeah, I feel. feel. (laughs) Now, the reason I asked that question. My man walked in and saw me eating a Slim Jim. He was like, at some point, I'm going to address the fact that this man is putting this poison in his body. Give me one quick minute. Uh, Finish my education for the day. What is blue pill? Yeah, go ahead, brother. In the Matrix. They say that if you took the the blue pill that you are still in the dream realm. In the dream world. And it was taught to me that the only way that you change reality or the way that you create your reality is in the subconscious realm. So I like to say that I'm living in my dream. So I chose the blue pill. Okay, now the reason in 30 seconds why I asked that question. Go ahead, Bobby. So that I didn't make false <laughs> assumptions because when I thought about 19 Keys, I thought about, you know, Dap Sugar Willie from North Philly, you know, with that uh, with that mule situation going on. Dap okay. Sugar Willie. No, because that's, 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 uh, we, we, we do that to each other. We don't talk. We don't, you know, yeah. we right. don't solve the mysteries. Yeah. So we go off of assumptions. Right. And so when I thought about the blue pill, I thought about Viagra. You see what I mean? <laughs> so who's, who's better for 
the questions. Damn. Damn. We pharmaceutical <laughs> dope dealers over here. <laughs> he was like, shoot, this Bobby's might be like, the dude who keep the blue pill on him. Let me like, see. I might be able to get this nigga number. Nah, I don't uh, fuck with that. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he at least got to connect. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in his name. I feel you. No, but we need to be able to do that. You know, we need to solve some mysteries, man, yeah. instead of making these assumptions about each other. And it leads to all kind of problems, man. Right. You know, because folks don't ask. We'll look at each other and, like, just stay in the dark. And right. see, and for me, my studies, 19 is the most powerful number in numerology. Mm-hmm. 19, mm -hmm. alpha, omega, mm -hmm. one, nine, right. beginning and end, 19. Right. Second most powerful is 23. Mm. Correct. Again, Man, well, so just because he was good at basketball don't mean that we got to go and stop. make it the, <laughs> the second most powerful number. No, but it is. It is. Uh, <laughs> it is. But when I saw 19 and then I saw the young brother's Muslim, I was like, oh, 19. Yeah, the number 19 goes deep. You know, mm -hmm. the 19 days of power in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Muhammad goes and is, well, is taken by the, uh, the angel Gabriel. Mm -hmm. You know, to receive the Quran on Laylatul Qadri, the 19th night of power. You know, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, this young Duke, yeah. He he tapped into something. He may not understand what it is yet, but he's tapped in. <laughs> <laughs> well, for people, for Let's just, get him just, on. Just for clarity, uh, I deeply understand what I tapped into. That's great, man. <laughs> hey, that's great. That's I, even better. You know, I'm, I'm a decoder, a decoder of paradigms, and it, it definitely goes into multidimensional layers. Of when you observe numbers, you know, there's a particular frequency that you tap into. Even when you're talking about mathematics and ontological mathematics, you're not talking or transform mathematics. You're not talking about mathematics that's just written on a piece of paper that doesn't have any energy. You're talking about mathematics that's written in space and time that can truly be transformed into frequencies and reality. Man doesn't invent mathematics, he discovers it. And mathematics, or when you're talking about the number 19, it represents the frequency of truth. Um, and that can be applied in many different ways, but the number 9 is the smallest number that represents all numbers. You know, the as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he said when you're talking about the beginning of time, when you look at the number 1 through 9, it just represents all of the ones. But when you're talking about a singularity or a singular event, which will be motion, because that's when you would talk about one, zero would be more so, everything is more so binary in that thought process of zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. But everything that comes from the one is still attached to that same source, but it allows you to get a comprehensive understanding when you understand the beginning and everything that comes from that beginning, everything that comes from that one, then you can understand everything that comes from that nine. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about creation, the beginning, that particular, that one motion that was set in place, that created this event that we live in today. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you tap into understanding what an, uh, uh, a quark is or an atom, then you can understand also biology. You can also understand society and how these things are correlated with each other. Mm -hmm. So it goes more so into a whole comprehensive understanding because even 1 plus 9 equals 10 and 1 plus 0 equals 1, so it goes back down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to share something real quickly with the with the audience and people in the room in terms of uh, proximity. You know, just the closeness that, that we're in right now. When we was coming up in the South in the fifties, um, in this early sixties, we were the first kids that got to play sports against white kids. Mm. And our coach told us, he said, "Look, let's go. Let's face some facts. We got to win by twenty. Mm. And we developed that mindset." Because it didn't take long to realize we had to win by 20. <laughs> Everybody got three fouls in the first quarter. <laughs> okay. And then we looked at each other and said, okay, coach wasn't bullshit. But before that, he prepared us. Mm. Win sprints. You didn't have no friends between the lines. We went at each other hard. And that became a mentality out of necessity. If I don't do anything else before I leave this planet, I want to reintroduce that concept. We got to win by 20. By, right. ni by 19. <laughs> okay. <laughs> win by 19. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, the Maya have a vegetable system. We have a decimal system. We just go by 10s because that's how we were taught. Mm. But they go by 19s and then unfold back to the beginning. I ain't got no so, problem with that. So this is what yeah. I want to do right now. I want to open up the phone lines. I want to hear from women. We had a deep conversation 
We've been talking about all types of things. Ladies, call us right now and tell us how you see us. For real. Your honest evaluation of this conversation, of the individuals here, that call us and let us know. I want to hear from ladies. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. You're listening to Mansions on Dash Talk X. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. We do this every Wednesday, 5 to 7 p.m. I'm going to the phone lines right now. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's going on, Zoe? A uh, dude. I'm calling up out of the Tri-State area. Um, you know, real fast, you know, just like a play on words of um, how they see us. Um, I guess they basically see us right now in our state as um, uh, spoils of war. And it's to the point where it's like, does it even really matter uh, how our women see us if we're all just basically um, spoils of war in prison, in an open-air prison, uh, you know, called Earth, planet Earth? Because, I mean, does it even matter? It's to the point where one group is basically in solitary confinement where the other one has a furlough just to move freely in and out of the grounds of the prison. Yeah, um, it matters how they see us because they birth us. Right. And they right. procreate with us. And <laughs> that's why we said women call in. <laughs> yeah. Bro, thank you for matters. the call. I appreciate oh, it, man. It. Yeah. And see. <laughs> that's why it matters. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm going to be quick. What to do, y'all? This is J-Mo out of Dallas. We got to change the frequency. We in the you, have, ah! you, have a, you have a deep voice, ma'am. <laughs> Dude night. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Uh, y'all trip. But I'm just leave it like this. I just want to ask y'all a question. An aspect of we un- we understand how our women are viewing us and how it's uh, negative and a detriment. And the aspect of the solutions, uh, do y'all think that those solutions should come in the conscious or in the subconscious? Because that's where they're greatly affected in the subconscious. Because most of the ill shit that they do when they interact with us, they don't even know that they're doing it. Exactly. So. I think we just need to tell them the truth. Yeah, I think you right. answered your own question as well. All right, we just... Not just though. <laughs> Peace. All right, thank you, brother. All right, let's keep it cracking. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Speak on it. What's going on? This is Eric from um, New York City. Just calling in and to give respect to you, brothers. Appreciate I know, that. You know, I know I'm... Let me let me turn this down real quick. I know I'm uh, a male, and y'all looking for females talking, but I'm going to say this. Our women, our women see us as we see the white man. If we see the white man as all supremacy, supreme and all that, they're going to they're gonna see us as inferior because now we're giving all our power to the white man, seeing him as, as God, as, as, as the controller. You understand? And they're looking at us like, you're supposed to be God. Why are you looking at him as God? So they're going to see us less than. Some, all right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the call. Good looking, man. Somebody said third guy in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a woman in here. But I don't think conscious men look at. No. Nah. I, mean, like, I, don't, I don't know too many of them dudes. But, but it's also being truthful. Wait, hold you on. Look let's, at let's, what the hell word supreme even means. Let's see what we got here. You're on the line. Caller, what's your name and where you calling from? My name is Dana, and I'm calling from the two ten freeway. All right, we got a lady, Dana from Dina. What up? Hey guys, great show. Um, I'm loving all the different perspectives. I'm glad um, we get to hear from wisdom. So I'm talking about Bobby and his perspective and experience. You want me to name them for you? We got 19 keys. We got billionaire. No, no, no. I heard them we all. got. <laughs> okay. No, I was just, I just want to, you know, uplift Bobby, you know, with the um, the experience and the wisdom he brings to them. Okay. I like that. All right. Well, I'm glad you appreciated the show. Mm. Thank yes, you, sister. But, um, you're welcome. What perspective or opinion I wanted to add to uh, your questions, though, about how um, we see you Um from my own perspective, I do see you as kings, and I'm willing to be led. But as a collective from a black woman, I don't believe black women want to be led by a black man. Mm. Ooh. Why? Shit. Why not? Because, I'm sorry, because 
we speak different languages, and at this point, we feel black men have nothing to offer, so we're not willing to learn his language and be led by what Ooh. he has to offer. That's right. Damn. We don't. City girls do. Well, I mean, Dana, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate uh, you sharing. Yeah, I have to put that out there because we've had many shows where we've talked about how everything is a transaction. And we come from other females or from women that have taught us if we don't use what we have as a transaction, that we'll end up being left behind. But we're left behind anyway. Mm, city girls. Uh, what I say? Uh, what I say? Damn. Thank you, Dana, for the call. We appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Let me tell you something about Dana. She's going to call in here and tell the motherfucking truth. Yeah. She's not going to hold back. And you heard what she said. She acknowledges us as kings or whatnot. Kings with no kingdom. If you ain't got no kingdom, there's no swingdom. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, this nigga like a baby king or something. Like. <laughs> but that's not true acknowledgement, though. But you heard what she said. You still got to... Give her the freedom to say what the fuck she wanted to say, and that's mm-hmm. what she said. But that's not what happens in the kingdom. Well, you, if you ain't got no kingdom. You can't effeminate your king and then tr- say that I, I acknowledge you a king, but I'm not going to treat you like that. Wait, wait, one. wait. Did she effeminate? <laughs> in that aspect, <laughs> no, if you want to be no, able to do she didn't anything. Nah, she, said, she, said the, she said it isn't her, but she said she's found that the majority. Uh, women do. She in said, general. She was, like, she was like, not her. Uh, so it wasn't said, her. But I'm but saying, but when you say the, not me and then we you speak for the collective, the that still though. adds you. Well, then she's told you where the collective come from because she said she's had these conversations. It wasn't like she was just, she was like from her experience, and you can't tell somebody what their experience is. Right. So let me, let's get some more. Callers, okay. you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Who do we have here? Let's go here. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And this is Cece from New Orleans. What up, Cece from New Orleans? Talk to us. Yeah, it's me. Finally. Um, I just wanted to say to me, on a real note, like I'm 32 and I'm really noticing like money don't mean nothing if you don't have skills. And what I mean is if this world ends today or tomorrow, I need someone who's going to be able to know how to do, know how to survive, know how to get it going with or without anybody else being around somebody who knew how to turn light into darkness you see what i'm saying or let me reverse that know how to stand in darkness just turn it to light. you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like i'm nervous right now but it's like i skill sets skills means everything because mm. if this world ends today or tomorrow, like, I need somebody who's going to know how to survive. Mm. Like, money don't mean nothing at all. Like, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, young lady. Appreciate you for the call. She needs Bear Grylls. Is there a black Bear Grylls? <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> There's a uh, black Tarzan, I know. No, Follow uh, him, uh, he the man. What, what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> is there a show for that? No, because we didn't produce it. We, Listen, didn't, we didn't see the necessity. Yeah, we, we did, don't. but yeah, we did. BT just won't produce it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is no longer funny, man, because... You, you, I'm just telling you, though. You can't be something that you have not been exposed to. That's true. And Caller. It, and it hurts us, man. It really do. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Eric from Tacoma, Washington. A dude, we want women to call in, man. So what? Can I? All right, here. You want me to put my girl on? Yeah, put your girl on. You don't get to talk. Put your girl on the phone. The fuck? Well, he get points for having a girl to put on the phone. He does get points for having a woman. That's good. Put your woman on the phone. Shit. Wait. (laughs) Say put your woman on the phone. And now we're on the phone. What happened? We we just want to know. the question. You know what the question is. You should have prepped your woman before you put her on the Through phone. what lens do you see black men? <laughs> well, actually, I was listening to you guys, but I was cooking, so I got distracted. I don't know actually what is going on exactly on the topic. Well, what do you think of the man that put you on the phone? Yeah, how do you what view I, him? What I, oh, is he black? Yes, he is black. Okay. How do you view him? Well, I really respect him because he, even though... We have ups and downs. We he's been talking with me with the truth, even though the truth hurts, and I I accept that. I've been uh, 
accepting the he came from the good way that he talked to me with the truth the he put everything on the table and uh, he was not accepting like accepting that I was not going to accept him anything but he was going to you know this is how I am um this is this is what I are actually feeling and how I'm, how I'm telling you um I really love him and uh, X, Y, or uh, any reason is going to change my love for okay, him. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yes. What's your race? What is my my race? Yeah, yeah you're I'm Hispanic. I'm Hispanic. I'm Hispanic. Ah. What kind yeah. of Hispanic? That's a broad term. You from Mexico? <laughs> um, you Guatemalan? No, what, what I'm you? Guatemalan. Ah. <laughs> you got the point. Okay, we don't have Guatemalan. <laughs> Okay. Is she one of the brown ones? Because you know it's a lot of brown ones down there, boy. <laughs> There's some black ones down there. Who the hell you some straight black that? ones now. <laughs> Talk to us, boy. Who is this woman on the phone? With? <laughs> I'm a watermelon right here. Hi, my name is Ruby. Ruby. I'm from Guatemala, guys. Okay. I've been listening to you, too. Yeah. Did you hear what she said? He, hey, t- he I- tells her the truth. Mm. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it though. I appreciate the call. I appreciate you guys reaching out. I appreciate you guys sharing with us. All right. Thank you. All right, good brother. Peace. We ladies call in. We ladies is like y'all talking. ain't shit. I ain't dialing. Well, pro- we don't <laughs> tell them the truth because too many. We got to get to a point where guys got to be like, hey. Let's just start telling them the truth. We know the outcome ain't going to be good in the beginning. <laughs> we know it ain't going to be good in the beginning. People don't but... want to sacrifice what they got to sacrifice in order to tell the truth, <laughs> which is the reason you met up with her in the first place. Right. Mm-hmm. So, man, that's what I've learned, man, because, man, I don't know how long it would have took me to get here if I didn't become happy, mm-hmm. like, alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now I'm at a point where, and now I realize that so many of us lie to them. <laughs> Because we have to, they don't like the truth. Mm. Like we, no, 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 we don't have to. No, right. that's well, what I'm saying. Well, a lot of us don't to. have good communication skills to say the he, truth in a matter where it can come off to no, where they can accept it they, as well. They not go accept it anyway. But huh. you gotta no, well, keep I gotta, telling well, uh, it. You see, gotta I'm keep sure saying somebody it. like you know possibly know how to uh, speak it in a way to where it yeah. doesn't be so offensive to no, what I'm they better, already. I'm think. better with words. Than I know I have. Yeah, you got a great gap too. Yeah, you got the gift of gap. That I know man, every, everybody doesn't have every that. Every man yeah. who was sitting in here got the gift so, of gas. I would, say, I would say first you got to up your communication skills to be able to get whatever point you want to cross. But I don't even sugarcoat it no more. I couldn't because when you sugarcoat it, they just take the sugar. Mm. You ain't hear mm-hmm. shit else. Didn't mm. hear none of the other stuff. Mm. Like, sugar oh, that, without sound. Yeah, they take I the, go, <laughs> go directly to the, they take to the, the program. They suck it into the sugar is out, and then they spit it out. Mm. Then it, you ain't take the medicine. No, it's, being blunt is definitely can be uh, a great method. And yeah. a lot of people don't know how to be blunt as well and just say what you mean. You, you got know? to. And mean what you say. And, and mean what you and say. And I'm not blaming women no. for, you know what I mean, for not being able to accept the truth. You've been told a lot of lies. <laughs> but... Yeah. But my thing is, that's the only way we gonna move forward. So let me let me clean this up because this shit's a rabble. <laughs> <laughs> In my coaching, I give out two books. One, Radical Honesty, Brad Blanton. This book is is harsh because he teaches radical honesty. Now, a lot of people have taken his book. It's a, it's, a, it's a bunch of negative reviews on his book because people have weaponized the truth mm-hmm. under the guise of being honest. I'm going to hurt you by saying shit, right? I'm I'm going I'm to turn this shit into an arrow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to turn it into a bullet. So what I do in my coaching, because I deal with relationships, I make people read that book, but I also counterbalance it because the universe is about balance. I also counterbalance it with a book called Nonviolent Communication. Now, you talk about getting the most out of your woman. Mm -hmm. If you could be radically honest while being nonviolent in your communication, oh, you're going to get some shit across. The brother 19 Key says something about upping your communication style or skills. Mm-hmm. The first thing you got to do is recognize what's your style. Are you 
competitive, combative, collaborative, cooperative, avoidant. You got to figure out which one of those styles you are most of the time. You get what I'm saying? Are you avoidant when somebody stands up to you in relationship? Are you combative when they mm-hmm. stand up to you? Because if you got a good woman, part of her job is to stand up to you when you fucking up in private. When you fucking up in private, there should be she should be able to stand up to you in private and go, you fucking up. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, does that make you competitive? Well, you was fucking up too. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Does it make you combative? Who the fuck you talking to? Mm. Does it make you avoidant? Listen, I ain't got time to talk about that shit right now. <laughs> if you, you, you understand? You have to identify how you are in the heat of the moment. Mm-hmm. It's a hard thing to do, right? Yeah, I'm glad I've gotten there. So again, relationship is designed to reveal these things to you. And it ain't got shit to do with your partner except that they serve as a mirror. To bounce that shit back to you. And also leadership competency. I think when you talk about designing a relationship, a lot of people would, you know, you want to say something, but you don't want to be a representative of what you're talking about. And a woman can smell that a mile away. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. as in a leadership, in a relationship, if she gets a man that's going to be a leader, leadership competency is more so about direct manipulation and indirect manipulation. So direct manipulation to be more so I'm going to become a good role model and lead you to this goal that I want to get you to. Indirect is more so incentivizing a way to get you to this goal. Mm. So that's why a lot of men more so become ambitious to obtain things to get you to follow them. Mm. And then other men become good examples, good actual men, and then say, follow me because, look, I am what I speak about. Mm. I am exactly what you're looking for. But you, you're touching on something else. Not all men are leaders. Exactly. So most niggas got to incentivize. Yeah. Well, a lot of men are boys, and they don't know that they're not men because they don't know how to manage themselves. Mm-hmm. No, no. I'm saying niggas who have come to a realization that I'm one of the niggas following orders. There's those people. Well, I mean, a good not, follower is a good leader. Every leader has to follow direction. But what I'm saying is not, not everybody wants that. Right. Well, that's 100% true. And that's not everybody important. wants that's that. That's important to recognize because in order to be a leader, you have to actually say it out loud, I believe. Like, you have to take on that role and responsibility because that's why a lot of people don't want to do the model of becoming a good role model because they don't actually want to be leaders. Right, because that goes back to chess. Not every chess pawn becomes a king mm. or a queen. Or it, it's, it's just sometimes it's, I'm cool being in the ranks. Right. So we have to deal with that part, too. So women, when you recognize you got somebody who's content, mm. With being a pawn, right, and you want a higher piece, you need to understand this motherfucker content. This who he is. But then also, is that woman conducive towards being with a good leader, or is her level is more so being with a pawn? How about it? Because there's different levels of womanhood as well that can bring out that true leader, and then some that can just bring out that they can make that pawn content with his life. That's why I say sometimes you have to remember you have. What you are. Mm. Just because you desire it don't mean you deserve it. Right. You could desire a better piece in the game, but that piece is reflecting where your ass is right now. Exactly. Because if you were somewhere else, you'd have something else. That's why a lot of black men go to white women to retire. I <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, shit. Let me get a couple more callers in. They, oh. <laughs> Caller, you're Is on the line. I don't like the phones up. I don't know what <laughs> wow. Caller, you're on the line. What's the name? What's your name? Where you calling from? Get it in now. I'm B from Chicago. What's up, y'all? What up, baby? Chicago. Yeah. Chicago, my kind of town. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow, I can't believe I got through, of course, but I mean, how I see you guys is, <clears throat> it's wonderful to me, but it's because I had a great father that I can see these things. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, he pretty much set the tone for, you know, for what I attract and what I gravitate to now. And I mean, as a whole, black men adore me. So, mm. I mean, you know, nothing, nothing really 
too bad can come from that, but um, I haven't been able to listen while I've been kind of waiting on the line. Um, oh, I'm sorry, honey. <clears throat> it's okay. I, I apologize, but you will be able to see the video because it will post right after this. Yeah, it's cool. I just didn't know what I was missing. That's all. Oh, you missed a whole <laughs> lot. But... In terms of what, of what you were talking about. I can't go I back two you... hours, baby, but I... It's okay. Okay. I just mean since I've been, you know, I just mean since I was waiting to get through. That's all. Um, well, I'm glad but... you did get through, sister. Yes, we appreciate the acknowledgement. Thank you for the call, love. <laughs> no problem. All right, Real then. quickly, so while you're getting the next call up, what she said is so important. She has been rewarded by having a good father. She did mm-hmm. say that. It's made her life a whole lot better because mm-hmm. she has seen the model of possibility. Right. She said, my life is good because she knows what she's looking for and she's able to ex- to, to, to accept that mm, in a right. wonderful way, man. That's all I wanted to say. It's good for everybody. When they I have love it. Factor. I love it. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Chicago. Mm. Chicago, back in the building. What up, yes. Chicago? My kind of town. <laughs> Once again, um, first of all, I want to say peace, guys. Um I really appreciate all of the knowledge and everything that you guys are giving us. And I want to give a shout out to Blue Pill. Blue hey. Pill, man. Peace King. Um, I got the opportunity to meet you, me and my daughter, when we uh, flew to New York. I, we got to meet you, Red Pill, and and and, um, and, and my and my brother that that be doing the you the YouTube. So keep on doing your thing. I appreciate you. And I love all y'all. All right. Thank People you, love. Great work. We appreciate great it. Thank you. Sis. Wow. They calling in. Let's see what else we got. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. My name is T. I'm calling from North Carolina. Hey, hey. NC. Hey. Yeah. Tobacco <laughs> Road, man. Ah, ah. What part, sweetheart? So uh, I'm in Riley. Riley. Okay. I was just there. All, all right. right. What's up? All all right. Right. Talk to us, lady. <laughs> Uh, my husband and I, we love this show. So we're sitting here and we're listening. We've been together um, 16 years. Mm. And so. Y'all made it. Yeah, congratulations. I have, I have, I have a, a couple of like one or two points. Mm. So how I see black men is I see them through the same struggle and the same eyes as myself. Um, and what I mean mm. by that is I, you know, I'm a, I'm a product of, what, you know, America should say, you know, is statistics of, I guess, a black male. You know, my father went to prison back in the um, mass incarceration, crime bill days, um, dealing with, you know, some of the the drugs or whatever. And then my uh, brother went at 16, went to, um, they were both, like I said, very strong, very, very strong um in my life, but my brother went to prison at the age of 16. They waited and they sent him to a detention center, and then 18, they transferred him to a prison. He pled guilty because, of course, as you guys know, there are crimes where they give you high bails and you can't afford them. You can't afford the lawyers. This happened years ago, and so they transferred him to a prison when he was 18. Okay, when he got out when he was 20, he committed suicide. Damn. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty much a direct product of a lot of different statistics in our in our particular community as black individuals. You know, you have where he was affected by the system, given a lengthy sentence, got out, you know, at a very early age, no second chance. No, you know, any, a lot of people came and spoke up for him. So, so um, sis, no, sis, I got to jump okay. in here. It's 55. Yeah. We got to end the show. But okay. I, I need your point. Give me your point right now. Okay. Yes. I see black men through the same as that struggle, but as black women. Um, I think that as black men, I think that first and foremost, black men need to know where, where they're going, um, where, where are they leading um, black women. And so just in 2019, um, I think that a lot of people are lost, particularly hmm. some black men um, in their in their viewpoint. And so um, I just think that if they know where they're going, sometimes you try to talk to a lot of them and they really are not sure. Um, someone mentioned about uh, white men being superior. A lot of them have that mindset, even with prisons, and just how the system has beat them down. So I guess my thing is, okay, I'll I'll follow you, but where are you leading me to? Mm, all and right. So, um, all right. Uh, hey. And that's just We got to go, honey. We got to okay. go. I, Jesus. Okay. I think she might have the answer. Yeah.
did. She got a piece of it in there. Look, we got to wrap it. Let me just say this. I appreciate you for calling. I appreciate you and your husband for 16 years of great marriage. Keep working on it. Keep working on yourself. It's going to keep popping. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate you. No problem. No problem. 16 of them things. That's half my life. How do they follow you, bro? You type in the number 19 on Pop up under 19 keys, underscore keys, and 19 keys on any other platform as well. Bill, where do they find you? You under dig billionaire PA. Where do they find you? There it is. Bobby Glanton Smith. Let's go. Glanton Smith. You, oh, excuse me. Glanton uh, Smith from Murfreesboro. Find you. You can find me on porn. You can hey man. I wouldn't be last. V-O-R Wednesdays. We'll be back Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. with another heater with the ladies. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Zoe. And we out.